Hello, we're back with another edition of the Community College Report. I'm Don Ambrose. The ordinary professional development class features an instructor lecturing to a group of people in a classroom. Southeastern Community College recently tried a different approach when a professional development class visited Table Rock for some instruction in creative thinking. Tom Reeves brings us the story. As a challenge for administrators of Southeastern Community College, a professional development course was created to fulfill the need by subjecting participants to stressful situations such as rock climbing and repelling. Bill Ball, instructor at Southeastern, uh, proposed and taught this exciting class. I've been uh, teaching repelling and rock climbing for 22 years, and I've seen the real positive results it's had on students all through these years, and so. When I started thinking about our situation here at Southeastern, it was not uh, that I thought we needed any great amount of improvement, but I knew the people here were open for ideas and open for original thinking and so forth. So I said, why not see if this thing would go across? And then we had a meeting uh, before we actually went, and we said more about the trip too, which gave them more time to think about they would actually be doing something that could be dangerous and how would they handle it? And so they had a little time ahead of time to, uh, to really think about how they would deal with it themselves. And a lot of it was trust in me and trust in other people and the equipment that we had too. James Fowler, Director of Counseling at Southeastern, recounts his first time repelling. In this case, um, was much further, was much deeper than, than the kind of fear that uh, if I'm gonna speak in front of a group, mm -hmm. I get very nervous and I start shaking. And uh, sometimes I have an uh, internal reaction, very fearful. In this situation, it was, a, it was a similar fear, but I wasn't nervous. I was not shaking, and it was cold. It was, uh, it, it was the, the kind of fear that I've never felt before. Uh, it was a fear of, of, a com of, of walking down something that you would not even walk to the edge and look over it's so scary and you're afraid you might accidentally topple over it was and then here i am i'm going to walk down it it was that sort of fear we wanted to turn fears into positive action we wanted students to find out that by taking small positive steps toward the goal they wanted to accomplish that they could accomplish that goal and if that'll work there, in that situation, it'll work here at the college, too. Our last report is from Southeastern Community College. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand the implications of this story. As far as I know, this is the first time an educational program has launched a rocket with equipment aboard to transmit live television pictures back to the ground. Our electrical engineering students built a 100 milliwatt television transmitter from scratch and integrated it with a lightweight black and white camera. Our technical physics students built a rocket to carry the camera and transmitter payload. On May 1st, 1990, the rocket was launched and we received live video from the camera aloft. Without our technical physics instructor, David Cuvion, in his class, the camera would not have gotten off the ground. His students had to overcome some problems, some of them so difficult that a computer program was developed over a period of about six months to solve some of them. We had to be concerned with altitude, g-forces, aerodynamic drag, and parachute deployment, parachute size, the type, and finally the location of the launch. Of course, we didn't want the vehicle coming down through somebody's roof in case something should go wrong. Finally, the big moment, we were ready to launch. Here are the live pictures as we received them from the onboard camera. You can see glimpses of our recovery team scrambling about trying to get to the landing spot. Don't let the spiraling pictures give you vertigo. We believe we've worked out a way to stabilize the camera on our next shot. 
This was just the start. Next year, we plan to go higher and higher. Meanwhile, you can tell that our students and a considerable number of fans are very pleased with the results of the project. Southeastern Community College held its first teleconference today. In this age of technology, the meeting was broadcast to other community colleges across the country via satellite. Leslie Ulmer tells us how it worked out. Southeastern Community College hosted a conference today for other community colleges from all over the United States. Except nobody came, but then they weren't supposed to. Instead, conferees participated through a technological hodgepodge of television, satellite, and telephone. Viewers at other community colleges can call a number on their screen. The calls come in here and then are transferred to the moderator on stage. Today's teleconference was possible because of the satellite network for the community college system. Several years ago, the state gave each community college money for a satellite receiving dish. Community colleges take turns hosting programs that other colleges can receive on their dishes. Viewers tune in on their TV sets and participate by telephone. There's a lot involved in making something like this work. From the production truck, we send a signal through a cable to the uplink truck, and the uplink truck beams this information up to a satellite or orbiting overhead. That satellite then returns the signal back down to Earth so that it can be picked up. The production truck is where the entire onstage program is run. For example, the equipment controls when pre-recorded segments roll, when the microphones are on, and which camera is actually on the air. And if all goes well, it sounds like this. Afternoon. Welcome to Student Monitoring New Directions. In Columbus County, Leslie Omar, Eyewitness News 3.